Good morning and welcome to worship. As we step out into our gardens or outside for our daily walks, we are reminded by the chill in the air that once again, by God's grand design, our seasons are changing. The arrival of the coronavirus has also brought about changes that we weren't expecting. Many of them bad, but others have been surprisingly good and we should always be thankful for the good. Pam and I have had more contact with people in our street than perhaps ever before. And perhaps you have experienced something like that as well. We can be assured that just like the changing of the seasons, this troubling time will eventually pass and the life that we used to know will begin to return. And we do look forward to that again, don't we? Our service this morning was prepared by the Reverend Barbara Allen, who is a supply minister that we share with Leemore Uniting Church. Now, Barbara would love to be with us in person, but must remain in isolation because her husband, David, is unwell. So we do thank her for putting this service together for us. Let us come before the Lord. Gracious and creative God, we give you thanks that we are awake and alive in a brand new day, one that has never been here before and never will be again. May we be nourished, inspired, equipped and comforted today and always. Let us pray. Holy Creator God, on this autumn day with the golden leaves falling and the crisp morning air invigorating our bodies, we come in the name of the risen Christ to worship you. We have every reason not to let our hearts be troubled, not to be afraid of anything in life or in death, for we are your people, loved by you. During these days when we have been confined indoors, help us to be mindful of all your blessings to us. You are the God of seasons, of autumn with its blue skies, rich red and orange hues, of winter, a time of rest, of chill, of rain, of spring with new life, buds, blossom, perfume, such an overflowing abundance of blooms and greenery, and of summer with its heat and dust. You, Lord, are the God of our own seasons, baby, toddler, child, teenager, adult, senior citizen, all within these bodies that you gave us. You are wonderful. Yet sometimes we neglect to say thank you. Sometimes we become so overwhelmed by world events and worries that we forget to put our trust in you. Please forgive us. Sometimes we become so caught up in the what ifs that we neglect to look at the many blessings we have received recently and throughout all our lives. Please forgive us. Sometimes we neglect the ministry of prayer, which is a gift to us, a way we can talk with and to you without needing an internet connection or Wi-Fi or cable, just to simply be with you. Please forgive us. And in a time of silence, we remember other things for which we seek your forgiveness. Let us pray in silence. God is love. Through Christ, our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Take hold of this forgiveness and live your life in the power of the Holy Spirit as forgiven people. Amen.
Irene will now bring us the Gospel reading from John chapter 14. Our reading this week is from John chapter 14, verses 1 to 14. Jesus, the way to the Father. Do not be worried and upset, Jesus told them. Believe in God and believe also in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house, and I am going to prepare a place for you. I would not tell you this if it were not so. And after I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to myself, so that you will be where I am. You know the way that leads to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way to get there? And Jesus answered him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except by me. Now that you have known me, he said to them, you will know my Father also, and from now on you do know him and you have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, that is all we need. Jesus answered, For a long time I have been with you all, yet you do not know me, Philip. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Why then do you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe, Philip, that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I have spoken to you, Jesus said to his disciples, do not come from me. The Father who remains in me does his own work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. If not, believe because of the things I do. I am telling you the truth. Whoever believes in me will do what I do. Yes, he will do even greater things because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask for in my name so that the Father's glory will be shown through the Son. If you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Just before I bring you this message, I'd like to remind everyone that Barbara Allen prepared it and wrote it in the first person. So all of the stories are hers. I have tried to recast it in the third person, as if I am the narrator of her message. So I hope that in doing it this way, I've been able to uh, retain the flow of her thoughts. So shall we begin? What house did you dream about living in when you were a child? In Barbara's fantasy, hers had turrets, and it was very much castle-like in design, but not in size. It was small, but with turrets. She loved the idea of a circular tower sitting way up there, um, a bit like Rapunzel, I suppose. Now, these days, she doesn't fancy a circular room because it's too hard to get furniture in except at exorbitant prices. And she doesn't at all relish uh, all the stairs in a tower. And is there such a thing as a circular stair lift? Probably not. So no, she doesn't live in a castle or in a house with turrets. And that's fine, because where she is now is her home. And home is where the heart is. Have you ever watched the TV program Grand Designs? Barbara's husband uh, quite enjoys the UK version, but frankly, 
uh, she finds it annoying and usually walks away before the program is half over. She also mutters throughout, which is probably a bit annoying for David. If you haven't seen the show, the premise is about a house being designed that is extra special. She quite likes uh, the ones that are built to be eco-friendly, but some, well, last week's, for example. A couple sold their perfectly good house to turn a 100-year-old concrete water tower at the bottom of their garden into a home. Now, I understand the need and desire to preserve something of history, but a concrete water tower for an enormous amount of time and money? So uh, you can hear her right throughout the program, mutter, 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 how much? Why? What luxury when there are so many people who are homeless? Grand Designs could be the title for today's sermon. Barbara has prefaced her message by stating that there are two dominant themes in today's portions of scripture. One is to look at Jesus' words of comfort in my father's house, or the other, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If we looked at both, we would need to schedule in a lunch break. So she has chosen to address just the first one, in my father's house, which in a sense follows on from last week. Last week, one of the readings was Psalm 23 the shepherd's psalm. In Barbara's sermon for last Sunday at Lemoore Uniting Church, she spoke of it being like an old friend, a source of comfort. Today we meet another source of comfort, a much loved portion of scripture used at many funeral services and during the journey of dying, John 14. These are the words spoken by Jesus to his disciples after the Last Supper. Words that they needed to hear to help them through the harrowing days ahead. These are words we hear when we are upset. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Words we hear when we start to doubt Believe in God, believe also in me. Words we hear when we need comforting, while we grieve and when we fear death. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? The New Standard Version calls them dwelling places. In the King James Version, mansions. In the Revised Standard Version and in the New International Version, they are called rooms. Grand designs. Words we hear when we are scared and fearful of dying. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also, in my Father's house. Grand designs. Wouldn't you just love them to do a TV program about this verse of Scripture? In a loving parent's home, we can't help to think of death sometimes, can we? Especially these days. We believe we will be with God and see those who went before us but sometimes, sometimes our knees shake just a little and we may think, but, but what if that's not so? Remember, these words were also for the disciples, those who are about to fail, to deny, to betray, to leave and to hide. Their sun was going to set at midday and their world was going to collapse in chaos all around them. At such a time, there was only one thing to do. Hang on to faith. Trust 
in God. There comes a time when we have to believe. Just believe. Because we can't prove it. To accept by faith where we cannot or do not understand. We might cling on to the sense that there is a purpose in life, that there is meaning, that love is the reason, that it isn't about the meaning of life, but that life has meaning. But in reality, we want more than just inspirational quotes. And in this passage, we do receive more. It's like those ads on TV, but wait, there's more. And it was usually some kind of a, a steak knife or something. But Jesus' offer to us is much more than a steak knife. He offers us life, eternal life. In my Father's house are many rooms, a grand design. Barbara recalls reading this passage to a dying lady and her family. They said she wouldn't like that very much as she hated housework. Barbara's response, it was heaven, so no dust. These words may simply mean that in heaven there is room for all. Room for all. I don't know about you, but houses can sometimes feel a bit cramped, especially during the last few weeks or so. Enough room for most of the time, but usually one expects to get out a bit more. Also, sitting at home, one discovers those piles of things and boxes that really need to be sorted out. But where do you put the items after they're out of their boxes? An earthly home can quickly become overcrowded. An earthly home can have no room. Think of the, uh, the Christmas story, because there was no place for them in the inn. Have you ever driven past motels looking perhaps for somewhere uh, to stay overnight and seen those no vacancy signs? Not very welcoming, are they? But heaven is not a tight fit, not a small house, but a truly grand design. Heaven is as wide as God's heart. I'll say that again. Heaven is as wide as God's heart. There is room for all. As it says in the message version, there is plenty of room for you in my father's home. If that weren't so, would I have told you that I'm on my way to get a room ready for you? Jesus was saying to his disciples, his friends, don't be afraid. People may shut their doors, not let you in, but in heaven you will never be shut out. You will never be shut out. Those words of grace. It doesn't matter what you have done, you will not be shut out. What else does this portion of scripture tell us? Well, it reminds us of Jesus' honesty. If it were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And in that pivotal verse, I am the truth and the life. None of us, no Christian, was ever led to belief through false pretenses or through lies or cunning tricks. He told his disciples and us of persecution, of hatred, of our own crosses that we would have to carry. Jesus did not promise us a life without any hardship, without illness or without grief. But he did tell us and his disciples of the glory at the end of the story. Jesus did not bribe people with promises of an easy life. Instead, he set a challenge to aim for greatness, to live a more truthful, just and compassionate life, to model our lives on him. 
perhaps the image of a house can call us to prayer. Robert Munger's book, My Heart, Christ's Home, is a small devotional classic. Munger explores the house and its rooms through the eyes of a young convert to speak about our relationship with Christ. In each room, something new is discovered. In the living room, the young student and Christ agree on a time to meet each day, sitting in comfy armchairs near a fire with a bookcase nearby. The student is thrilled and agrees to start each day with Christ in this room. So each morning they meet, Christ taking the Bible off the shelf and they read it together. Munger writes, those times together were wonderful. Through the Bible and his Holy Spirit, he would talk to me in prayer, I would respond. So our friendship deepened in these quiet times of personal conviction. However, pressures of life got in the way of this regular time together. Days were missed. One day the student rushed down the steps and passes the living room. Its doors are open. He goes in and sees Christ there, waiting. He asks him if he has been there every morning. Christ replied that he has been. He had said that he would. Ashamed, the student asks for forgiveness. Christ tells him that his time was not only for the student, it was also for him. Munger has Christ say these very moving words. You have forgotten that this time means something to me also. Remember that I love you. At a great cost, I have redeemed you. I value your friendship. Just to have you look up into my face warms my heart. Don't neglect this hour, if only for my sake. Whether or not you want to be with me, remember, I want to be with you. I really love you. Munga concludes with, Don't let Christ wait alone in the living room of your heart, but every day find a time and a place when the word of God and in prayer you may be together with him. John 14 has Jesus promised to care for us here and in the next life. We are not alone, never have been, never will be. What a grand design. Heaven, in my Father's house, what a grand design and in our hearts. Home is where the heart is. Home is where God's heart is. Home is where God's heart is beating within my heart and within your heart. In my living room, in my heart, resides the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God of love, we come to you with our prayers for others. During the time of pandemic, we ask that you are there with those on the front line, the doctors, the nurses, and other members of health teams. Be with those who are suffering, those who are dying. Comfort them and their families. God of love, we pray for those going to work who feel unsafe, but they know they are performing vital services. We pray for and give thanks for those working in supermarkets, at checkouts or stacking shelves, for their cheerful faces and friendly manner. We pray for churches worldwide unable to worship face to face. We thank you for the many different ways we are learning to be church. We pray for the world, your world. We have been caught up with COVID-19, but we know there are other crises going on, wars, hunger, drought. 
Be with those in trouble spots. We pray for world leaders and for our own leaders. Give them wisdom, courage and compassion. In a time of silence, we remember those near and dear to us who need our prayers. All these prayers we give to you, Lord, as we join in the prayer you taught your disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So go out into the world with joyful hearts. Know that you are loved. Love others. God has rooms. Rooms for us. Rooms for all. Barbara has used Bruce Pruter's words as a basis for our blessing this morning. May the nurturing fatherly love of God always hold you in strong everlasting arms. May the costly brotherly love of Christ ever walk beside you and deliver you from evil. May the dependable motherly love of the Spirit ever enfold you with holy warmth. Amen. May God bless you. Amen.